So labeling the degrees of freedom on a structure can sometimes be a little tricky. I'm going to run through a few examples in this video and show you the rules we use for labeling degrees of freedom when we do an analysis using the stiffness method on um, indeterminate structures. All right, so let's start with a, a pretty simple example here. Let's pretend we have a fixed beam or a beam here, and it's uh, fixed at both ends. Okay, it's fixed at both ends, and there's a roller here in the middle, all right? So instantly, we notice that there are two elements here, right? Uh, each element is between uh, two joints. So we have element one here from this point to this point, or let me just call this A, B, and C. And then we have element two. Now, when we label degrees of freedom, um, we label everything from left to right, and then from uh, unrestrained, unrestrained to restrained, 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 okay? And our unrestrains, um, we actually do rotational ones first, then we do vertical uh, degree of freedoms next, then we do horizontal. And then the restrained is the same way. We do rotations first, then we do verticals, uh, then we do horizontal degrees of freedom. All right, so using this rule, let's label degrees of freedom um, on this structure, okay? So the first one, we're going to label all unrestrained first, starting from the left side of the beam. And we do rotations first, okay? So on the left side of the beam, we have um, support A. And support A supports a moment, right? Fixed ends support moments. That means this is a restrained uh, rotational degree of freedom, okay? We move on to the next joint. Uh, here at roller, rollers can only um, support vertical loads or vertical reactions, right? So here, um, a roller does not support a moment. In other words, this has an unrestrained degree of freedom, uh, a rotational one, right? So here I'm going to write theta 1. And the reason I write theta is just so it reminds me that this is a rotational degree of freedom. And 1 because, well, that's the first degree of freedom we found. Okay, then we move on to this joint at joint C. Here again, it's a fixed support. That means there's a restrained uh, degree of freedom or rotational ones. Um, and so we don't label anything there, right? So then we move on to vertical unrestrained reactions. Here, all three of the supports support a vertical reaction. So all three of the degree of freedoms that go up, um, or vertical degree of freedoms, they are um, restrained, okay? So we've done rotational, we've done vertical, and then we've done horizontal. Um, since in most cases, if there's a loading here, we usually ignore horizontal degrees of freedom um, since there won't be, we really don't have in structures um, or in, in a basic fun, a basic structural fundamental course, uh, we don't really deal with horizontal. So I'm just going to skip the horizontal ones. Um, but, okay, so we're done with um, unrestrained degrees of freedom. Then we move on to restrained degrees of freedom, starting from the left. Uh, we do rotations first. So here at A, remember we said we had a restrained degree of freedom. I'm going to call that theta 2. Uh, joint B is already taken care of, right? The rotation is already taken care of. And then at, jo at joint C, uh, we're also going to write theta 3. Okay, so those are all the rotational uh, un uh, restrained degrees of freedom starting from the left to the right. Now we move on to the vertical ones, right? So our vertical ones at A, we have a... Uh, uh, vertical one here. I'm going to write delta just to remind me that this is a vertical or a, a translational degree of freedom. And that is going to be 4. And then we have delta 5 and delta 6. Delta 6. Right? Delta 5, delta 6. This structure has um, 6 degrees of freedom. That means our S sub complete matrix is going to have um, 36 values, or in other words, it's going to be a 6 by 6 matrix. <clears throat> so our S sub complete is going to be a 6 by 6. And 
Remember, we label rows and columns very uniquely. We label them from the first degree of freedom all the way to the last uh, in order. So we have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. And then on the uh, columns, we do 1, <clears throat> 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. And we draw a partition line between the last unrestrained degree of freedom and the first restrained degree of freedom. In other words, between the uh, green and the red. So I'm going to draw a line there. And I'm going to draw a line here. Now, there's actually four matrices within this S subcomplete matrix. This matrix right here is S sub U, U for unrestrained, unrestrained. Uh, this one is S sub unrestrained restrained this is s um, restrained unrestrained and this is s uh, restrained restrained right um, so that that was a quick example let me do uh, one more uh, a different one let's see well this one's a fun one so what if we had what if we had a, a beam here and it was fixed on one side, fixed on this side, and there was a, a roller here in the middle, and there was, that was it. So this is an indeterminate structure. Again, this has element one, element two, and <clears throat> if we, let's say we applied um, some, some load here, we don't know what it is, but um, our deform shape is going to look something like this, right? Something like this. Now, the way we label these, again, we start uh, <clears throat> we start with left to right. We do all unrestrained first, and then we do restrained second. And for our unrestrained, we do uh, rotations first, then verticals, and then for our restrained, uh, we do again rotations first and then verticals second. So looking at the structure, um, let's start from left to right. Let's start with the unrestrained degrees of freedom first and we do rotational unrestrained degrees of freedom. So let me actually label this A, B, and C. And here we're going to have um, at A, we have, do we have an unrestrained degree of freedom that's rotational? No, because fixed ends support a moment. So we move on to B. B has an unrestrained rotational degree of freedom. So I'm going to write theta 1 here. And then at C, there is no support. So that means this end of element 2 is also free to rotate. That's theta 2. Um, so those are all the rotational unrestrained degrees of freedom. Then we move on to the vertical unrestrained degrees of freedom. Start at A. Uh, there's a fixed end, so that means this supports a vertical uh, reaction. And that means that is restrained. Uh, so we move on to B. Uh, rollers support reactions in the vertical direction. Um, so that's restrained. Uh, C, there is no support. So this, this uh, node here at element 2 is free to move up and down. So this is an unrestrained degree of freedom. And I'm going to call that 3, right? 1, 2, 3. Um, since we're done with all the unrestrained degrees of freedom, we move on to the restrained degrees of freedom, starting with rotational first from left to right. So at A, we have a rotational degree of freedom. That's theta 4. And those are all the rotational restrained degrees of freedom. Uh, then we move on to vertical restrained degrees of freedom. Here at A, there's a restrained degree of freedom. I'm going to call that delta, uh, let's see, 5. And then at B, there's good, this is going to be delta 6. Okay, so we have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. Uh, since there are 6 um, <clears throat> degrees of freedom, our S sub complete is again going to be a 6 by 6. But this time, when we label the rows and column, um, it's a bit different from our last example. We have one, two, three, one, two, three. Then we have four, five, six, four, five, six. And I'm going to draw uh, partition lines between the last unrestrained degree of freedom 
and the first restrained degree of freedom. In other words, between 3 and 4 um, for both sides, right? 3 and 4. So this S sub, oops, S, S sub um, UU or unrestrained, unrestrained is at 3 by 3, right? 3 by 3. S sub RU, I'm sorry, not RU, UR. Right, unrestrained, restrained, row, column. This is also a 3 by 3. And this is S sub uh, RU, and this is also a 3 by 3. And then we have S sub RR, and this is also a 3 by 3. All right, so those are two examples uh, just to clarify a little bit more on labeling degrees of freedom.